hier mit äh, Grandmaster Dr. Tan Su Kong äh, von Malaysia, Kuala Lumpur. Äh, we are at the moment in Düsseldorf, Germany, um, after intensive seminar uh, from 11 days. And uh, we do now a little interview about his work, uh, about his life, so that the people outside uh, hear a little bit uh, about his uh, passion of uh, teaching the art of medical Qigong in the world. So my uh, Grandmaster Dr. Tan, um, my um, first question would be, um, how do you get started in the Qigong? What's, what's well, I have been, uh, as a Chinese, I actually uh, always very interested in the Chinese-related kind of culture. And uh, very fortunately, during my school days, I, one of my teachers from China actually uh, taught us Qigong, Kung Fu, and so on. That's how I started to get interested in uh, the art. And then uh, later, as I, if I uh, proceed further, I was uh, very fortunate to be able to follow various masters to learn uh, different type of martial art and different type of uh, Qigong. Maybe a lot of people do not understand there are many types of Qigong. Yeah? Uh, Qigong, if you look into the history, it started about five to 6,000 years ago. And five to 6,000 years ago, when people are sick, what do they do? They have to find a way to yeah, overcome their health issue. So from their experience and their wisdoms, they notice that when they move in certain way, they get healed, a uh, certain type of problem. When they grieve in certain way, they also heal a certain type of problem. When they make a certain type of sound, they help them in improving certain type of health issue. And when they do certain visualization, they also help them. So that was the beginning of how people use different methods to practice something we call Qigong today. And then eventually, they also uh, notice that when they reach a certain level, they know how to use their energy to help other people to correct their health issue. So we refer this our practice as medical Qigong. And then medical Qigong develop eventually the, uh, something known as religion Qigong or spiritual Qigong. When the Buddhist and Buddhism Qigong, the Taoist and Taoism Qigong, they are focusing on improving their health, at the same time also improve their spirituality. And eventually, it developed into something known as uh, martial art Qigong, where these are the people who do martial art, they do uh, a lot of self-defense, so they practice to improve their health, at the same time, they practice in a certain way to improve their self-defense. And of course, there are some people they are only interested to improve their health. We refer that kind of practice as uh, health qigong. So I was very fortunate over the year. By now, it's like for fifty over the years, yeah, that uh, I managed to be able to experience different types of qigong without knowing there are different types of qigong. Yeah. So I started with health qigong. I go to martial qigong and so on. And eventually, in 1990, by chance, I have very very fortunate to be able to learn uh, medical qigong to do healing because in the, the traditional Chinese uh, those traditional follow traditional system normally the medical qigong doesn't teach outside the family they need help to within the family keep within the family and also uh, normally in uh, the traditional way they only teach the boys their son they don't even teach a daughter because to them, daughter, once they marry, they become part of another family. So therefore, I say I'm myself very fortunate because the master who I come across, he actually treated my friend's uh, cancer and within three uh, treatment, he managed to uh, get his cancer in remission. And then uh, by that time, I see practices different types of Qigong for about 20, 30 years. Really. But I do not know Qigong and do healing. So when we met, I fortunate in the sense that he actually knows children. Yeah? And he knows he has an art that he should pass down. Otherwise, when he uh, sort of uh, uh, pass on his life, this art will disappear. So we just met at the right time, at the right moment, under the right situation. And uh, I was a businessman. And he knows that my background businessman, uh, I will not misuse the art. To go and do things that is not proper for other people. So I was 
Expo Fortunate that started a long voice metal sitcom in 1990s. After I uh, managed to, uh, after I learned from him about how to do your sitcom for healing, I continued my profession. I was an IT profession. By then, I was a very successful IT entrepreneur. I run my own company, a company around Asia Pacific. But in addition to continue my profession, whenever I see people need help, I help. And for the next 10, 11 years, I discovered the power of uh, medical chico healing. Because when I come across anybody who needs help, I help them. And uh, surprisingly, most of the time, they get uh, treated, they get healed. You know? So I noticed that uh, it's something which is uh, I am more passionate about. Of course, in the business, you are successful, you get financial reward. However, when you are able to help somebody and you see how we change their life, how we move their life forward, that kind of joy is uh, financially they not able to uh, buy. So after 10, 11 years of that kind of experience, I decided that I want to change my uh, direction in my life. So I sort of like taking an early retirement, I sold my uh, business to my partner. And I started pursuing teaching people medical chico as a professional. So uh, since the year 2000, I've been doing this work uh, professionally. In Malaysia, we have our own uh, professional training center. We also have uh, our own uh, clinic where every day we uh, work with patients. So uh, that's what we've been uh, working in Malaysia. But of course, when we first started that, just like many other countries, uh, government, they, they want to regulate uh, medical related kind of activities. So I was uh, in uh, interview, in uh, investigation, what am I doing? How come I use my hand, I do healing? Am I doing a professional job or I quote unquote con people? You know? So very fortunate after the investigation, after getting to know what we are doing and also perhaps because of my background, and uh, when I decided I want to go into professional uh, in this world, I do a lot of research. I did research. Because before that, I knew that when I do certain things, I get certain results. But what's in between? There must be a science behind it. Yeah. So as an IT professional, I don't know what is behind it. You know? So I do a lot of research, I read out and, and so on. And that was very fortunate. So because when I started as a professional, when I was uh, like, interviewed by the Malaysian government, I can explain to them in a medical professional way, the scientific way, how this uh, healing works. Yeah? And uh, because of that, over time, you get to understand what I'm doing. And uh, because of that, I've also been fortunate enough to be recognized in Malaysia as one of the experts in uh, Qigong. I was also invited to instrument to help the government to set up uh, syllables, how to train a person from uh, no background to a point that they can do Qigong therapy. And this syllabus is being gazetted in Malaysia by the government. So in Malaysia, if you go through a training based on that syllabus and you have enough experience, the government can even issue you a certificate to certify you in uh, Qigong therapy. So that's what so uh, we started to work in Malaysia, and uh, that's what I did. And with uh, my background in IT, I also do put up a website. And through the website, people around the world, they start searching, they know what we're doing. And slowly, there are people that come from different parts of the world that go to Malaysia to receive our training, just like Joe King. You know? he, uh, he kind of come across our work, and he uh, attended my course in Portugal, Spain, and also come to Malaysia and attend the full course. So we have a systematic syllabus to take people from, uh, as a beginner, don't understand why Qigong, to understand the foundation of Qigong, to understand how to practice, and then uh, to, to understand how to use different Qigong exercises to solve different kind of uh, problems. We call it self-healing. And then for those people who are interested to help others, we have a, uh, another syllabus to teach uh, 
what is the science of uh, Qigong healing, how does it work uh, scientifically, uh, how to investigate even from the uh, uh, some of these uh, medical uh, uh, point of view, how to investigate the cause of a person's problem, and using different way, different protocol to uh, do treatment. Because over the year, I have developed protocol for common issue. So different issue, as a beginner, you just have to follow a protocol. Protocol means a step of activities, a step that you go through. And a protocol means if you apply that uh, procedure, that sequence, you should get a predictable result. So at least 60-70% of the time, up to even 80% of the time, you get a predictable result. That's called protocol. And medically, you have a protocol. All medical professionals has a protocol. A doctor has a protocol, a surgeon has a protocol. We also have developed a protocol. And this protocol has been used over the year, since the year 2000. Yeah, hundreds of uh, thousands of cases. And we, uh, because of that, we also have uh, able to train uh, many practitioners. They are actually providing such a service in the hospital in Malaysia. We are also even, uh, and many of them, eventually they love this work and they become professional. They set up their own center, they are providing services every day to people who need help. So uh, in a very, very short uh, briefing, this is what we have been doing. So uh, besides Malaysia, we, I now we get invited to conduct courses in uh, different countries. Like uh, Dusseldorf is one of them, which uh, this is the fourth time I come here. And uh, we have uh, over this trip, we have trained about 20, 30 uh, healers. So uh, hopefully this uh, healer, they uh, eventually can uh, use this to complement their profession. Because some of them they are acupuncturists, some of them they are doing massage, some of them they are doing different type of uh, therapy. And the uh, art that we teach will complement very well with what they are doing. For those of them who they doesn't have any uh, healing background, purely use the energy healing. Yeah. Our body is made of energy. So when something goes wrong with our body, it always involves energy. So uh, Qigong practitioner, we study how the energy moves. We study how to uh, uh, regulate the body. We study how to balance a person's uh, energy from the body. By doing so, uh, if they suffer from a certain health issue, by doing uh, regulating, balancing, enhancing, and so on, their physical challenge will sort of uh, get eliminated. Yeah, that's how what we are doing. Yeah. So, uh, yes. Sorry, yeah. I give you a very long answer. Yeah, that's no no problem. No problem. It's a lot of information that you have already give to the audience. Um, um, I mean, you you have a own clinic in Malaysia, and you also. Um, um, look after all the hospitals where your ther therapists uh, are working in. Um, so, so uh, uh, can you maybe um, tell us a little bit about some, some cases of what you did, uh, about the experience what you had uh, in Qigong healing with the patients? Well, okay. Uh, in fact, uh, over the professionally, I've been doing healing for more than 20 years. Unprofessionally, even when I started, it's about 30 years. Yeah? So over this period of time, I have treated like that, probably tens of thousands of cases. And uh, I must say that, uh, in fact, Qigong healing, medically known as uh, energy medicine. And there are many top researchers in the world that study in energy medicine. Yeah? And through their research and through their peer review uh, research reports, there's a list of things that uh, medically that's not possible, but working on energy, you can show results. For example, you can uh, change the gene expression. Yeah? For example, you are able to grow the nerve. Yeah? And uh, you're able to help the bones to regrow uh, much faster and so on and so forth. These are not for me, but it's a research done. Yeah? But over the year, I also experienced a similar thing. Yeah? So, uh, but I must say, humans are very funny. They normally seek help when they have pain. Yeah? And most of the time when they have pain, is due to 
muscular structural problem. So uh, I must say that the patient that we that come to us for help, about 50 to 60 percent are muscular structural related. And uh, energy healing is very, very effective on structural, muscular, muscular structural related kind of problem. We can even shift the bone by applying energy. That sounds uh, unbelievable. But if you take for example, a lot of people when they have structural problem, it's due to the body not balance. And then and they say, for example, they have a lumbar problem and so on. Very often it's because of their leg, their arch. Either they have a flat foot or very flat arch or they have a very high arch. So when they have a high arch or the flat foot, so when they whatever they do, like daily activities that they do, whether they do sports, they do walking, whatever, they are not balanced. When they are not balanced, the first thing that affecting them can be the knee. From the knee you go up to the hip, from the hip you go uh, along the uh, spine going upward. And finally we go to the shoulder to go to the neck but the source of problem is the arch and uh, a lot of therapy you look at the symptoms okay the pain is in the knee you work on the knee yeah the pain is in the hip you work on the hip but the source is in the arch so for permanent solution you have to solve the source that's the arch and uh, we have developed a protocol whereby applying energy energy can shift and reconstruct the arch when it's too high, too high, it can go down. When it's too low, it can go up. Yeah? And, uh, well, you have to see the belief in it. Yeah? And uh, the best is for your experience. Okay? So, uh, this is like some of the uh, very extreme muscular structure related problem. The spine will have uh, stiff teeth, they shift it back, and so on. So, this is uh, the muscular structure. And then, of course, we also uh, heal the like, chronic problem. Chronic problem, take for example, somebody has hypertension is a chronic issue. What causes hypertension? Yeah, medically cannot explain. But we know that when we work with energy in a certain way, it can regulate back the uh, blood pressure. Yeah? The, let's say for example, people suffer from migraine. Okay, what causes migraine? Yeah? Again, uh, from energy point, we, uh, we have actually uh, did research and we know that what is the cause? The cause is because of blockages of energy in a certain part. So what we did is just to uh, solve that blockage and the magnet will be gone. Yeah? So we did the uh, muscular structural problem, we did the uh, chronic disease, uh, we do even uh, cases that medically doesn't know what happened. Some of them even related to a DNA kind of problem. Yeah? And uh, surprisingly we apply the energy because affecting the gene expression and so on, we are able to uh, correct them. But uh, over the years, we found that uh, about 50-60% are muscular structure related. Another about 30% are cancer related. The rest will be all kind of uh, problem that uh, when they see medical help, they don't understand what causes it, they cannot find a solution, and then out of desperation, they are looking for alternative. And they start searching and ended up with us yeah? and uh, most of the time from my experience most of the time we are able to help them yeah? if we are not 100 percent at least 80 percent 90 percent or at least we can improve their quality of life so that is uh, very uh, kind of generally i sum up our kind of work yeah? and uh, the result that we get so when the uh, teach uh, complete uh, program in this topic and my next uh, question would be, is this uh, difficult to learn for the people? Um, I mean, they come just for, for a weekend seminar and uh, they learn different kinds of topics. And uh, uh, how you, do you guide them through the uh, single seminars uh, to your um, whole program? Okay. First of all, everybody has energy. Yeah? So uh, I'm not building a person and giving energy to do healing. So everybody actually, to me, have in a way certain healing ability because everybody has energy, energy will, will work in a certain way only thing that we are not aware of it So, my teaching is number one I use uh, so-called experiential method 
to allow the people to experience. Once they have experience, they remember. Yeah? So it's like uh, the door is there, I just tell you to take the key and open the door. Yeah? And then you, you see for yourself. Yeah? And then that's number one. Number two, we have uh, actually uh, set up everything in a very structured way. And uh, even healing, we have so-called protocol for you to follow. And you follow the protocol, you are able to catch you. Yeah. So for a beginner, which is a very good way of picking up, very easy. So far, I've been teaching for professionally for since the year 2000. I must say, I never failed in any training yet. Yeah. Everybody able to pick it up. The only question, some will pick up faster, some may be slower. But after the training, I'll say uh, so far my experience, everybody can heal. The question is, some will pick up faster in the sense that they can heal in a shorter time, let's say maybe 5 minutes, another person may be 20 minutes. Yeah? Some may be in one session, you can solve the problem. Some may have to uh, do it 3 sessions before you get a result. But uh, everybody able to get something out. Mm -hmm. uh, what, what the people learn in the first, in the first two seminars and in, in the training program, how is it set up? Okay. Uh, our training program, uh, we have, uh, as I said, structure way. So we first develop into two main areas. The first area is for yourself, involving self healing. So in the self healing, there is actually a four days training. Yeah. A four days training, first two days, is uh, to build the foundation, to understand why uh, qi gong, understand different types of qi gong, to understand how the different way of practicing qi gong. Each will practice Qigong for what kind of problem. And then the third and fourth day is to apply whatever different exercises that we taught you in the, in the class to solve different kind of problem. Yeah, so we mix and match. Yeah. So first you understand overall what is Qigong about, why you practice in a certain way. Number two, after you know that, then there's a, a, a kind of procedure for to follow. If you have this problem, you do this, you have this problem, you do this. Yeah? So uh, that involves the whole thing is for, some, for everybody to achieve some kind of self healing. That you have a health issue, you can, can seek help medically, you can see how with any therapy, but if you've chosen to use Qigong, you should be able to be in a position to do that. So that's the first area which involves self healing. Then the next area is how to use energy to heal somebody, to treat somebody. Uh, that is a bigger area because you have, as I said, muscular structural problem, you have uh, cancer, you have different kind of problem. Uh, so are, we have to take you through step by step. So for that, we actually have uh, four weekends, eight days, uh, eight days training. Sometimes when we travel overseas, we can condense it because people may not able to spend eight days. Uh, the minimum is seven days. If it is not of the eight days. So we structure it uh, to understand the science of healing, to understand the common problem, what's a protocol, and then to go into more detail the structural, muscular structural problem, to go into how to treat somebody. We felt even have to be face to face, you call it remote healing or distant healing, uh, cancer related problem, and uh, so on. So we, we structured it in, uh, in those more details. And in how many um, counties uh, have you had teach uh, until now? Okay, I have been uh, physically. I go to about 10, 11 countries to conduct training. Yeah. Uh, however, a practitioner they come from about fifty-two different nationalities. Yeah, yeah this is this a lot uh, so far. And now you are in Germany. <laughs> yeah, I am <laughs> Germany. And, and yeah, we hope that in the next future more people maybe. Uh, like to join your, your seminars here in Düsseldorf or somewhere else in Europe and uh, thank you very much for your time here and uh, all the great seminars we had together and yeah um, then I hope to see you soon guys if you're interested um, you, uh, your website is uh, where, where, where okay. can people find you my website is wellnessmedicalchikong.com uh, chikong spelled q-i-g-o-n-g so wellnessmedicalchikong.com that's our website and uh, I must thank you for organizing this seminar for me and uh, otherwise I won't be here to teach the people yeah? Yeah, and, uh, 
Well, uh, I, I, I hope to see you in the near future. Yeah? Uh, I, not only I want to come here and teach, I also wish that locally there will be somebody able to pick up the teaching skill and start teaching some of the courses. Yeah? Because alone, I will not be able to have so much time to travel. I was involved in some other big project in, uh, in Malaysia. So I, just in case I may not have enough time to travel so much, so I, I may have to uh, reduce my frequency of traveling. So if I do come here, don't miss opportunity. Yeah, yeah. Hope to see you. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I thank you very much for the interview. And yeah, I hope to see you then shortly in the cinema. Thank you. Thank you.